Hello, a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McLuhan. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the one stop broadcast platform, one hour of superb, scintillating information, education, and entertainment globally for the world. With the one stop broadcaster, me, Scotty McClure. A very, very good evening to you. It's 10 o'clock on Sunday night, Sunday the 2nd of April 2017. And we have so much to talk about tonight and so much to discuss. Now, I'm needing a bit of a favour from you. I have two things running at the moment. Two separate broadcast systems. And I need to know what you're seeing and what you're hearing. So let me know if you can see me and let me know if you can hear me. One is a backup system, of course. And uh, Morsi Puffins on there. Good morning, Scotty, from Sydney in Australia. Good morning to you, Morsi. Lovely to have you with us. Hey, Scotty. Jim Morris is watching. Howdy, partner, says Robert Bain. One minute past, says Edward James. Yes, it will be now. Edward, because we were on here just in time. Good evening, Scotty, says Jim Clark. Now, what are you hearing and what are you seeing, guys? Because, as I say, I've got two systems running, so very, very big experiment. Once we get this sorted out, then we are big time. We are flying. All right, so tell me what you're getting there. That would be excellent. See and hear you loud and clear. See and hear you fine. Any echoes or any sound problems, any visual problems, anything like that, do tell. Can some of you see all of my bonnet, and can some of you just see a bit of my bonnet? Excellent that Morse is out in Australia there, in Sydney. Good evening, Scotty. I hope you're well. It's lovely to see you, my dear old mate, says Carl Morris. Uh, see and hear you loud and clear, says Alex Duff. It's like your pick is with a soft focus. And good evening from the Denny page, Mark from Central there. Fantastic. Uh, you seem to be a bit foggy, but all clear apart from that. I can't see you, says Edward James. Must be to do your equipment, Edward. All of the bonnet. Fantastic. So if you're seeing all of the bonnet, that is absolutely dinky-doo. We will press on. Now, we have a lot to discuss tonight. So there we are. Poor video and audio, Scotty, says Andy McClory. Very pixelated, says Alex Robertson. Oof, I'm not seeing very much. Video know the best, but your dulcet tones coming through loud and clear. I can't see your handsome visage. Aha! Now, that's interesting. If I wave to you just like that, can you see me? Because, as I say, I've got uh, two systems running. All of the bonnet and hearing you loud and clear and seeing you as well. Think you're okay? Good picture and great sound. Bobby Grace is watching Dinky Doo. Bit foggy around the chin. Hello from Gavin of Loch Winnoch. I think that's probably a shadow caused by the fact there's more than one chin, Gavin. So there you go. Dinky doo, lovely to have you all with me, of course. Big discussion program tonight. We have to finish at 11 o'clock sharp. So, so much to talk about and so little time to do it in. I hope you've all had a great week. Now, can I just have a quick word uh, about the social media, of course. Share, 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 share. Anything that you see with Scotty McClue on it, please do share it, because we are building a global program. And I know you've heard all this before, but if you can just bear with me, and let's keep building and building and building. Rome! Perhaps one of the finest cities in the world. In fact, definitely one of the finest cities in the world, apart from Glasgow, of course, uh, and Edinburgh, and Aberdeen, and Inverness, and Carlisle, and Newcastle, and um, Liverpool, and Leeds, and Birmingham, and uh, what's the other one? There's another one I'm missing. Um, oh, yes, London. That's right. So there you are. So... All of these very, very fine cities, but Rome was not built in a day, so Scotty McClure's global program won't appear in a day. But if I can have a word with you about social media, remember, of course, that you can get me on all sorts of social media, Google+, Plus, LinkedIn, the Scotty McClure YouTube channel, a lot of new stuff uploaded there. So go on and enjoy, indulge yourselves, I say. And uh, lots and lots of sharing. So they are, good evening, Scotty, my friends, is Daniel Joseph 
a fine, fine fellow. I say Mary Carty, Andy McCrory, Julianne Scott. Tremendous stuff. Julianne Scott down in Wales. There, how marvellous is that, Julianne? So there you are. So try and make an appointment to listen at 2200 hours British summer time. Now, I think there were less of you last week because of the clock change. So just be wary of that. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, um, perhaps soon to change, has uh, got a very strange habit of moving the hour back and forward. In the spring, they move forward, and in the autumn, they move back. So there you go. Very, very strange. Diochian Fjord, says Julianne Scott. Have I said it right, Julianne? Nosta, I say, and Yakida. Uh, so there we are. Scotty, how much would a McClue stamp cost? Says Edward Jones. Oh, I think do you mean putting my head and face on the stamps? Well, I think that would be expensive. I think that would be a five pound stamp. Something going abroad. Something heavy going abroad. Like my good self. Uh, so there we are. But I've always wondered if we should have Scotty McClue on the bank notes. I think that would be excellent. Scotty McClue on the bank notes. And a dinky do to you, Scotty. Yes, just about Scotty, says Julianne Scott. So I nearly got it right when I was talking to Julianne there. Uh, George says a big stamp. Oh, it would have to be a big stamp, George. Thanks very much. You are filled with compliments. I say excellent stuff. And uh, also, George Mullins watching. That's tremendous. Now, what are we discussing tonight? I hear you screaming at your social media devices, your magical phones, your tablets, your PCs, all that sort of thing, where you can pick Scotty McClure up live every Sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp. Well, we're looking at traditional marriage tonight. Now, is traditional marriage starting to fray a bit at the edges? Because we have a lot of feminism going on at the moment. So the ladies are not prepared to be the little ladies that just sort of do everything they're told, obey their husbands and honour their husbands. There's a lot of, I that will be right, and that sort of thing. And a lot of single mothers out there, of course, without a man. Some of them can get one. Others don't want one. So what we're talking about there is very, very interesting. Is there still a lot of strength in traditional marriage? You tell me. This is your program. I might be popping up and presenting it, but it's the people's program. It's your program. We discuss facts here. We get everything as right as we possibly can. We have no strange agenda. So there you go. Uh, why no streaming videos, says Rudy Sack? We should be streaming, Rudy. Everything should be absolutely fine. And I've got two systems running. So I would hope that you're seeing me streaming. I hope I'm not still. Scotty, Halloween cakes, says Nivag Svitek. Um, no sound either, says Rudy. Rudy, that's your equipment because everybody else seems to be getting it loud and clear. Are we all getting it loud and clear, folks? Can you tell me that? Uh, never been married, Scotty, but thinking of it as a good one at last. So there you are. What are tonight's topics, says Rudy? That's what we're talking about. Can everybody hear me? Is the video streaming just as it should be? Do please tell. Spill, 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 spill. Share all. William Black's watching. And uh, Mark Gippert. Where is... Who's that wee fat Bob? I do not know. Scotty, there's a ridiculous post going on Facebook saying uh, Nicholas Sturgeon is not liked in Scotland. Uh, worse than Thatcher, have you seen it? George, you never ever listen to any of that rubbish. There's a lot of jealousy about the fact that Nicholas Sturgeon is, is perhaps the finest leader in the world today. Very, very interesting. Tremendous support for independence in Scotland. Now, I'm not a political animal, as you all well know. So we're not talking about the SNP here. We're talking about the Scots. Uh, the latest poll that I heard, the most honest poll, is that around 72% of Scots are looking for independence now. A lot of it because of Brexit and because of no hope being attached by an umbilical cord 
to um, to uh, the rest of the country. So there you go. So I wouldn't listen to any rumours about that. It's an appointment to watch, Scotty McClue, says Ben Lucas. I thank you, Ben. Dinky do to you. Lovely to have you with us. Um, I hope nobody's getting any interference because, as I say, we're running two broadcast systems tonight in the hope that we won't have an interruption. The other one can kick in. Billy Matheson's watching Dinky Do. I say Dinky Do to you, Billy. Now, what is the time? Ah, yes. Excellent stuff. So we're about 12 minutes past. We'll have a share point. Can everybody share this video? Share, 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 share. If you can't join us live at 10 o'clock sharp British summer time, adjust your clocks for that, then um, do try and catch us when we're uploaded onto um, YouTube. So there you are. A lot of videos, 209 videos for you, for your edification and delight on YouTube. Excellent stuff. Now... Uh, so we're looking at marriage. Also, Brexit. Have we jumped the gun a bit with Brexit? This is one for the British people, but the rest of the world can just as happily join in. Uh, so we're looking at if we've uh, jumped the gun here with Brexit. Have we put the uh, cart before the horse? There's a McClueism for you. The cart before the horse. It's an old saying, of course, but it's a McClueism in this point. Have we put the cart before the horse? In other words, should we have had Indy Ref 2 for Scotland before Mrs May triggered Article 50 for the UK coming out of the EU? I hope you like all these little acronyms there. Richard Mackay's watching Dinky Doo. It's all coming through loud and clear, Scotty, says Dave Hemsley. And Dave, you're a man whose judgment I trust implicitly because you've been a Scotty McClue fan for 25 years this year. On the uh, 27th of June, 2017, that's Scotty McClue's Silver Jubilee. What we're doing, we're collecting money, not for me, but for an independent Scottish media with no bias. So there you are. So a, a new agenda. So if you'd like to see a new Scottish media, I'm raising £5 million. Now I will do it. It's as simple as that. So you may as well get going and join in. You've all had your hollow laugh. Ha, ha, ha. He'll never do that. The man's dreaming. All that kind of nonsense. But yes, we will do it. And it will happen. We've got £310 at the moment. Now, I would like to see that as a thousand pounds by the end of tonight's program so guys if you've got a spare couple of quid two quid get your debit card it's all official all above board all written down there the videos are there and everything and you go on to gofundme and uh, forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue www.gofundme.com or one word gofundme.com and then forward slash S-C-O-T-T-I-E hyphen M-C-C-L-U-E. Or just put in the Scotty McClue Show at GoFundMe. Up will come the page. And if you can share the page, if you genuinely um, can't give, don't want to give, don't have a bean, uh, if you're a bit of a tighty, then um, don't worry about that. Share the page because it's got Twitter and Facebook shares on it. And I'd like every single one of you to share it. Now, you obviously can't do it during the program unless you're multitasking with uh, a couple of devices. But we'll uh, give you these details later. And I would like to see that move up to £1,000. Once we get our first £1,000, if everybody in Scotland gave £1, we'd have our target by the end of tonight. So that's uh, how amazing it is. Crowdfunding at its very, very finest. Uh, so there we are. Uh, now, what have we got here? We definitely have not jumped the gun with Brexit, says Dave Hemsley. Well, I wonder if we have, Dave, because if Scotland had decided to go independent, which it may well do, probably will do now, actually, with Brexit, then it would have meant that Mrs May could see what she actually had to work with, because I genuinely think that they're kidding themselves with all this. We need to work together for Brexit. Most folk do not want Brexit, right? And, uh, you know, they, they, some of them voted, it was very, very close, but some of them voted for it. People like myself, I mean, I voted 
uh, for it because I wanted more money for the NHS and I also did not think there was a chance it would happen and I think most Brexiteers do not think there was a chance it would happen so they got a fright they got a shock and Mrs May herself of course voted to remain in the UK so she's had to do an about turn a volta fassa right John Toms is watching dinky do very fine businessman there great social media man John Toms handy man to know I always say and uh, £9.99 on the network are free for streaming sites. Yes, we're not just talking about the programme, Lee. We're talking about purchasing media assets here and growing a proper independent media. So there you go. Uh, Mrs May is a totty, no, is a Tory. I think you mean to say, spelling mistake there, we typo. Um, it has to be authorised by Mrs May, first as Dave Hemsley. Well, at the moment, yes. But in actual fact, if you look at very early legislation for the Treaty of Union, you'll find that Scotland should be treated as an absolute equal, on a par with, uh, with England. So uh, there you go, Dave. There's a wee bit of information for you. And we want to all stay within the law, don't we? Um, you're watching the biggest show of the year, says Lee Buckinshaw. Absolutely, Lee. Scotty McClue's massive, mighty mega program globally live on Facebook Live. Massive, massive broadcast platform. Several thousand saw last week's program. Thank you for that. I thank you. That is absolutely marvellous. And also, um, what have we got here? Oh, yes, Derek McGonagall's watching now. Dinky do to you, Derek. Lovely to hear from you. And uh, we will keep chatting and see what is what I say. Very, very important. Right, if you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. We're global. Our first uh, person on tonight was Morsi. Morsi Puffin from Sydney in Australia. So let us know where you're watching uh, when you're coming on. Very, very important. And uh, we're discussing marriage tonight. Do you think there is still a market for traditional marriage? Right? Also, have we jumped the gun with Brexit? Have we put the cart before the horse? Should we have waited until Scotland had voted in Indiref 2 before tri triggering Article 50? for the UK leaving the EU. Tell us what you think about that. Get on to the program. I'm going to find even more ways to interact. So obviously you can interact right there and then with uh, with your typing fingers. David Cameron and George Osborne uh, have been found out to be... Ah, no, no, I'm not going to mention that, George. I'm not coming on with all that sort of stuff. So there you go. Um... Marry me, Scotty. Yes, I know, says Edward James. Edward, I don't think I'm on your bus, but thank you very much for the invitation. Very much appreciated. Uh, too many youngins getting married too quick and splitting up the next year, says Angie Thompson. Angie, that is a very, very fair point. And, of course, the cost of a wedding is not inconsiderable. So there you are. Are you having lush weather in Bonnie, Scotland, says Julian Scott. Julian we had the most heavenly day today, the best we've had for a long time. Warm and very spring-like. So there you are, very, very pleasant. Because everything gets out in the garden, or the window boxes. So yes, your answer to that is yes, lush, lush weather. Right, uh, Scotty McClure live on Facebook Live. Uh, can I just run through some of the social media, of course? Uh, I've already mentioned YouTube. So the Scotty McClure YouTube channel, a lot of recent stuff coming up there. Very, very important. If you're a big boss and you're out there and you own television and radio stations, you own newspapers, you've got a telephone system running, then see if you want to do something with me, Scotty. Scotty McClue, if we can get our heads together and appear on your network as well. There's nothing to stop this program going absolutely international on all platforms. 
So there you are. Same with the mobile phone companies. If anybody's watching from the mobile phone companies, feel free to approach Scotty McClue. I am very, very approachable. An absolute peach to work with, of course, when it comes to business. And if you'd like this program on your network, it'll get you a big, big audience. That's what I say. Um, now, recent stats are showing married couples are increasing staying married and unmarried couples with children are not staying together. So if they've got a piece of paper and they've drawn up a contract, they're more likely to stay together than a couple that are just living over the brush, as we say in this country. Um, my missus says I have to be the boss in the house. I have to call her and tell her why. You should have a debate about pigeons. Are they a pest or are they lovable? They're creatures, Angie. They should be allowed to live the same as the rest of us. Scotty, one of the Tories offer full Devo Max to Scotland. All Westminster controls is foreign affairs and defence. Well, uh, that's a very, very interesting thought. I mean, Scotland needs to have control of its own broadcasting and it should also have regulation of its own broadcasting. The British Broadcasting Corporation takes about 320, 325 million pounds out of Scotland, 9% of the license fee, and uh, apparently gives back 3% of the programming. So we shall find out what's going on there. Uh, so, yes, full Devo Max, Martin. Mm, I think everything should be controlled. Scots would be better at running their own affairs. I mean, right now, at the moment, regardless of people who argy-bargy and criticise and get jealous for their own agenda, Scotland has never been better run. So there you are. Alex Salmond and Nicola Sturgeon have done a fantastic job, dare I say, pardon the pun, a sterling job. Uh, so, what have you got? Not a chance, Martin, says Des Hemsley. So, right, so there we are. So, we wouldn't accept Devo Max, says Dave. So, it looks like full independence for Scotland, I say. Just found out I've got something in common with my wife. We got married on the same day, says George. How fantastic. There you are. And uh, I have a friend who talks about his first wife. She's his only wife, right enough, the first wife. And somebody was telling this week that they reckoned if you are um, a religious person and you have full belief in Adam and Eve starting the world, then Adam was created first. And it seems the reason for creating Adam first is so that God and Adam could have a chance to discuss things without being interrupted. So they Oh, before Eve arrived. Uh, fantastic. Yes, you will have something in common with your wife. Now, share spot. Can we share? Share, 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 share. Start sharing this video right now, folks, as widely as you possibly can to every single contact in your network. And also, can you type in, are you watching Scotty McClure right now on Facebook Live? Take the link off the top of the page and send the link round. So right click on the link and send it round. You've got to be up there. You've got to be in it to win it, guys. You've got to be up there with the social media. So I'm afraid there's a big, big chaff about links and about sharing and about going live. Very, very important. Mention this program as often as you possibly can say, do you watch Scotty McClure on a Sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp between 10 and 11? So there you go. Get that mentioned. Dinky do, so Scotty from Phil and Sophia in uh, Worcestershire. Sorry we're late tuning in. Kiss kiss. Please say hi to Sophia, the wifey who's knitting as we watch you. Now, Phil, what should it is? She knitting Scotty McClure a new bonnet. That's the stuff. I've got this bonnet. Have you noticed we've got a different bonnet on tonight? So there you go. Very, very fetching. Very swish. None of your nonsense. Lynn Kay says, if men are to be obeyed, then they should place the women on a pedestal. Well, I mean, yes, we do that. I mean, do all you guys open the car door for your missus? Do you tell her to put her feet up and that you'll get her a wee something, uh, a wee touch of uh, something to eat? Um, I was married once, and no word of a lie. I asked him for a divorce two hours later. Says, <laughs> sends me a kiss. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. 
uh, with EU Schengen freedom of movement to work is a border likely between Gibraltar and Spain, and if not, would an independent Scotland require one with England? Now, Rudy Sack, a fabulous question. You bring me on to our next subject for discussion on this very program. There's talk that the customs could hold things up. Right, some serious hold-ups at customs and at borders. Now, what I'm saying, if they are negotiating Brexit right now, which they are, and if they're not, they should be, um, then I think that during the negotiations, well, it won't have started yet, of course, in, in earnest, but there will be lots of discussion going on. And I think one of the points raised should be no borders. All right? We're, having, we're coming out of the EU, but we don't want borders. Now, I know the xenophobes are saying, oh, we're getting the immigrants in. Scotland is vastly, vastly, vastly depopulated. You can be driving through a glen in Scotland and see not another soul. And by the side of the road, you might see just a little pile of stones, a rickle of stains, as they would say in Scotland, a rickle of stains. Scotland's wonderful, wonderful, expressive language. And we talk about Rickle Staines. Now, that Rickle Staines may have been a village. If you go to a little island off the Sound of Harris in the Hebrides, a little island called Pabbe, there's not a soul lives on Pabbe. The sheep live on Pabbe. And uh, Pabbe, beautiful, beautiful island, had um, three churches and was home to 300 people. Then you had your Highland clearances. This is where there's huge friction with, uh, with, with the South over the years. Now, I know it's a long time ago. This is historic friction, but it still hasn't been sorted. And there's still a huge arrogance that we lead the world down South, you know, and the rest can just fall into line. Newsflash, not happening. All right, very, very important to get that message across. Now, Scotland is depopulated through social injustice. This is not a chip on the shoulder. This is an explanation. I'm not excusing anything. I'm explaining it. Right, so Scotland has been depopulated through social injustice. Now, wouldn't it be lovely to repopulate Scotland through social justice? An NMD that goes on, right, I have to get across, there's no connection at all between British nationalism and Scottish nationalism. They are the antithesis. They are the complete opposite, right? British nationalism is a right-wing xenophobic thing. Scottish nationalism is a left-of-centre caring thing, all right? So have you got that? Scotty, you really need to go on for an hour every weeknight. I do think that, I like to think there's, I do, I do think you would like to think there is something that stops you. No, George, I don't think there is anything official stopping. And this is all up for discussion. I want to build a network. We may even present at six o'clock news every night on social media for people. Uh, why is there no news coverage regarding Spain's foreign minister advising they would not veto Scotland's membership of the EU if we gained independence in the future? Because, Rudy, what you will find is that what's called mainstream media tends to favour unionism. So we need a, a media that also balances things up and explains the truth about independence and people are not terribly keen on the truth and politicians tend to be very concerned about the people they don't seem to feel they know the people there's a them and us now there should never ever ever be a them and us there's only us okay so there should never ever be a them and us. So be very wary of people who wish to divide. I do not think that Spain would veto Scotland at all. I can't see that happening. So there you are. Uh, in fact, I don't think they'd be able to. 
Uh, Eddie Freeman's watching, dinky do. Share, 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 share. Get back on the radio. There's lots of people out there that do not know what they're missing. Absolutely, guys. We need to get the numbers up all the time. Now, this program has come on by leaps and bounds. This is program number 28. So we've been going just over six months on a Sunday night for one hour only between 10 o'clock and 11. The very fact that it's global is fantastic. So the numbers are out there. They just don't know about the program. That's why I'm so very, very hot and saying, can you share, share, share? Also, I would like to spend some of the money that you have funded me with on advertising the program so that's why i want you to go fund me it's only a couple of pounds to you but it can be um turned into some serious serious money that can be invested in the program in an independent unbiased media without an agenda so that's why it's go fund me so it's not really a joke believe it or not it actually is there now if you want to know my credentials i've been in television and radio for 33 years right and i've been right at the very very leading edge of broadcasting for 33 years i've been in the entertainment industry for 40 years this year Woo! right celebration time and i though i only look 20 you know i do have some experience i've worked at the most senior levels i've worked with boards with directors with all these people so there you are that just happens to be and i've always been a person who's thought I need to build the experience. Now is the time to join on to put the business experience together with the broadcasting experience and build you guys a lovely, lovely network that I can pass on. So there you go. Uh, thank you for your common sense and your very perceptive answer, says Rudy. Uh, the Tories have just cut £30 a week from ESA, Employment Support Allowance. Yes, Eddie, I'm very, very concerned about this. We could definitely shave a lot of money off the defence budget and put it on to social care. Yeah, and I, and I mean, that should be happening. I don't want to be looked at as some sort of pinko, lefty, softy character, right? Because I'm not, I'm not even a political animal. But I am an economist. That's my original trade, banking and finance. So there you are. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I think that when people are genuinely ill and sick and what have you, we need a society. The same has appeared after the Second World War that went through this country like a dose of salts. Far too much in some cases. They were very damaging to the big estates and the country houses. They were very damaging to those that had been very, very wealthy. Now, I like to see parity. I like to see people being looked after, but you shouldn't sell off the family silver. So again, people need to get it into their heads, it's particularly politicians. Read your history books. Find out what is what. Don't think you are the first person in the world that's ever come up with an idea. Because, as my grandfather used to say, there's nothing new under the sun, my boy. So, it's just a different way of going about things. And I have always seen myself, when I've been given serious authority, that we are curators. It's a curatorial role, right? If you're given power and authority, with that comes responsibility. Very, very important. And you've got to use that power responsibly and consult with the people and explain yourself because the people will understand. If you're fair with them, they'll be fair with you. That's what I've found. Give the audiences what they want to listen to and to watch. They will reward you with their viewership and your listenership. That's been my motto. So there we are. Explain this is a zebra black and white stripes or white way black stripes, says Rab Hill. What's your thoughts on chemtrails spoiling our once clear blue skies, Scotty, says Phil Jones Hammersley. Well, there's a lot of aircraft out there. 
it's very interesting there are apps available and you can just see the traffic that's flying around and it takes a fair old bit of burning kerosene to get one of these big beasts up there so as a friend of mine once said if you knew everything that was going on you'd be very disappointed so we don't want everybody disappointed um, 96 percent of people who reside in gibraltar voted to remain in the eu might they be given another referendum in their own self-determination provide a majority to leave british rule says rudy zack well i think really that so-called british rule um, has been dissipated over the years by uh, a lot of namsy pamsy politics and uh, they've lost it they've sold it you know the british government traditionally usually sell a country they actually a check changes hands and they sell it to someone else because they don't find the business of that place particularly profitable uh timing's everything gordon brown sold a huge chunk of the uk family gold reserves to get the uk economy temporarily out of the mire this was done just prior to the price of gold soaring yes absolutely so there you are you're right see more i wish it didn't come to see more really because oh yes soaring a number of years back now we all actually got robbed in the process because i can remember old ladies going into shops to sell their wedding rings to pay their electricity bills so tut 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 i say maybe if mrs may is given a chance she will get the uk back in order after Cameron and Osborne reign nearly destroyed the country. Well, what that was all about was really getting the money back from the people. The people got completely robbed to get the money back for the banks, to bail out the banks, because the banks had been doing bad business. And you can't really let the banking system collapse, or the whole house of cards would come tumbling down. But um, I think we need to look at that. And also what should have happened there is that the public should have been issued with loan stock notes, right? Loan notes to say, we are giving our money to this bank. When it comes back in profit, uh, we'd like our uh, loan stock to go up a bit. Now, it might not have been worth a lot of money, but it's a wee something to the people. Gibraltar, the Falklands, Scotland, Wales, there's not going to be much left of the Union. Well, the Union was very flawed in the first place, George, right? If you look carefully at the Union, you'll find it's very, very flawed, the whole selling of the Union, because the people that flogged Scotland to Westminster did not have the authority. They just happened to be aristocrats at the time. So they'd fought under a flag for the king 600 years earlier, and uh, they'd hung on to it, and they said, let's just flog the country, because we've, we've drunk ourselves out of business here. So they got together, and uh, they were very slippery and slithery people as human beings, I have to say that. And they got together and flogged a country that they didn't actually have the right to sell. So, uh, you know, it's time that country was given back. You're, not, you're an Argyle man, Scott Eyre. Are you familiar with our wee tune of Danoon? Really, I know Danoon like the back of my hand. Now, where's the back of my hand now? Wait, let's see. Oh, yes. And um, all the wonderful characters in Danoon. So I know it well. I know Glenn Masson. I know the Younger Botanic Gardens. I know the Lauder Memorial at Glen Branter. If you look at the memorial down at the Queen's Hall, you'll see the name of Captain John Lauder of the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders. He was the son of Sir Harry Lauder, who was the highest paid performing artist in the world. So there you are. If you've ever seen the film Titanic, it was on last night actually and if you've seen the film titanic you'll see when the boat's about to leave queenstown they're loading on board cars and um, uh, then they're, they're, they're on a on a swing they're swinging the cars on board and then when the couple get together they go into one of the cars down in the storage the uh, deck at the bottom and then um, harry lauder used to take his new rolls rice over to america when he went on tour, fantastic stuff. And he's buried in the, the, in the Bent Cemetery in Hamilton. And uh, the old Duke of Hamilton, not the last one, uh, this one's grandfather, what we called the old Duke. Um, and I lived in the Hamilton Estates at one point. And uh, what we called the old Duke, we referred to as the old Duke. And um, he read the lesson at Sir Harry Lauder's funeral 
in the early 1950s. There you go. We a bit of knowledge for you there. You're talking about pawning wedding rings and the time these shops were closed. All they do is encourage thieves to pass on the stolen goods. And tradesman never sells his tools. These shops are full of...